Today, I wanna to show y'all how I would make a longboard using Zenit's custom downhill board builder. Now, they have had some custom services for a while, but recently, as in the last few months, they have developed a new customization tool on their website that I think is pretty fun and pretty unique. You get to choose virtually everything about the board and you find it, scroll all the way down to the bottom here, custom DH. Now this is, in my opinion, the most powerful longboard customization tool that I've seen on any website. Uh, I know Bustin used to have them. I've actually ordered a couple custom Bustin longboards in, back in the day. Uh, but this is definitely on a whole new level. I think even just getting started here, you can see all the shapes available to you. Um, yeah, so we're gonna look through these. What I'm looking for is a very small board. So I don't want much of a tail like this board. And I would prefer not a lot of nose overhang. And then I also don't want a ton of taper. Now, that's because I want the width of the board at my back foot to be as full as possible. Uh, in fact, we can go choose that now. I want the 9.25 width. I find that I personally start to struggle with boards under nine inches. So a little bit bigger than that's gonna help me uh, have a little bit better control with my size 13 feet. Anyway. Okay, the stinger's looking pretty good, but I do see a little bit of taper under the back here. Let's instead... Yeah, okay. So the bullet shape seems like that's gonna be the way to go. Uh, you can see that it's pretty square all the way to the back. It doesn't lose a lot of its width, and it does seem very short at, you can see, uh, 32 inches there. So it's exactly what I'm looking for. We got 9.25. Uh, oh, I skipped right over it. You can check the different molds. Um, got the bullet mold or the stinger mold. Uh, personally, I've been really intrigued by the rocket stinger mold. Um, I find that I really like a big concave under my front toe. Like I, I like a big wheel flare right there. And if I have a board that doesn't have a wheel flare there, then I will modify it to have one by either layering duct tape underneath the grip or you're using like a urethane concave implant uh, like those made by Prototype Downhill. Um, but what I like about this board is that it has that built in. You can see that steep concave under the front toe, but the heel looks like it would sit pretty flat if your front foot's at that angle. I'm not so much worried about the width under the front foot. So I'm gonna choose this shape because I know that my heel is gonna sit at the full width, probably right there, and that my toe is gonna to only end right there. So I think that's uh, that's the right shape for us. Uh, wheelbase options, um, 20.5 to 22.5, that's pretty small. Um, the 21 and a half to 22.6 is interesting. You only get one option in the back though. I'm not super keen on that. Um, that looks good. And there's the 20.4 to 22.6. Um, that's virtually the same as the 20.25 to the 22.5. Um, but it has less options in the back. So yeah, we're gonna go with this one. Uh, flush mounts, not interested in flush mounts. Uh, this board I'm primarily gonna be using with large grippy wheels. Uh, so A, I need the clearance and flush mounts lower your ride height. Um, and also having a higher ride height kind of changes the way that the, uh, the slides hook up and it changes the way that your wheels grip. Um, and for the purposes of this board, I think we're gonna have no flush mounts. Uh, but the wheel wells will be importance let's see what we got um stinger wheel wells are cool but not exactly my style i think i like something a little more simple that is pretty cool either the rocket wheel wells or the xl rocket wheel wells are what we're gonna have to go with um 
Now, when you think about it, the larger the wheel was, the more material is going to be taken out of the board. So we are sacrificing a little bit of rigidity if we use a larger wheel well. Uh, so I think I'm going to choose the smaller wheel well. Uh, we'll see if that comes to bite me later, uh, literally. <laughs> Uh, bottom color, this is an easy choice for me. I think Zenit's carbon, carbon, carb. <laughs> I think Zenit's camo carbon fiber is pretty cool. Um, yeah, glossier matte. That's not gonna display right there, but I, I definitely like a glossy board. Um, no graphic for me. I'm a simple person. I generally it's not that's not showing up oh, okay we can change it to white um i'm not a big fan uh i think these designs are great uh but i kind of like a, a bare minimum type of board i i just let's show off how pretty that carbon fiber is uh, so i'm going to choose white and then for the top color we'll flip that over um you know, I'm just covering this with grip tape anyway, and only a little bit's gonna actually show, so I think I'll leave it as this. You can choose carbon fiber or camo carbon, um, but I think that might be a little bit overkill on the stiffness because, yeah, there are some other things we can still change. Um, yeah, so we'll leave it at that. No patterns on top. Uh, construction, now this is interesting. I wanna do eight plies. Um, now, I'm not a rider above 230 pounds, but I have found that I do tend to like a little bit heavier board. Uh, heavier boards seem, at least for me, to uh, have better slides, uh, a little bit more control, more vibration damping, and the last board I'm coming off of was incredibly lightweight. So we're going to try to go to the other end of the spectrum. We're going to add eight plies here and we'll see if I like it or not. Now, I think that might be overkill because um, that carbon on the bottom is gonna really do its job. So I'm not super interested in the A-plies for sturdiness. Uh, I just really want the weight and unidirectional carbon stringer, unidirectional carbon cross. Oh, that's cool. I have seen this on some of the boards. Um, the carbon cross. That's cool. Okay, so that seems like it really locks down the torsional flex of the board. Uh, versus, let's see if the other one will display. Uh, I'll have to let them know that maybe there's a bug and the unidirectional carbon stringer isn't showing, but the carbon cross is what I was interested in. Lock down that torsional flex. Um, again, with a full carbon bottom and eight plies, maybe this is overkill on the rigidity, but it is what I want. All right, let's check out the next page. Okay, grip tape. No grip, well, I prefer to have some grip. Jessup, Jessup clear or Rome. Yeah, we're gonna get Rome. Uh, that's the coarsest of the bunch. It's gonna be most suitable for the big wheels that I wanna be using. And final page accessories. What do they have? What are you offering me? Uh, I have so many riser pads and a couple skate tools, so I won't be needing those. Uh, personally, I don't find torque blocks too useful. Um, but that's just for my own riding style. I know that a ton of people, a ton of my friends like them. And I have enjoyed them in the past, but I, I just with my stance, the way I move my feet on the board, um, I haven't noticed a ton of benefit uh, for at least my style of riding. So we're gonna leave off the torque block, but that's super cool that they include that because you know that shows that they actually know their clientele are going to be modifying this board in that way. Um, so let's add this to cart and just double check our options. Now, Zenit is waiving the customization fee. I think there's usually a $30 customization fee, but as of right now, it is not applying that, so we can get a full custom board. Uh, look at that, 9.25 with a tiny little wheelbase, my own shape, my own wheel wells, um, carbon fiber. Yeah, it looks like everything we chose came through. 278 bucks for a fully custom board to your specs, your shape, your wheel wells, your design, your colors. Uh, I actually can't imagine how that's possible. Um, that's just absurdly cheap for 
you know, what I know to be is a high quality board. I've been impressed with Zenith build and construction in the past, and I know that this is going to be no different. So I'm pretty excited. Now let's check out how all of our choices came out in the final product. So here it is. I wish I had the foresight to film this when the board was brand new, but nope, this is a couple months of riding and I've been thrilled with it. Uh, the 9.25 width has been perfect for me. This width has really enabled me to get great leverage on my heel side slides that I was missing before. Uh, so my form's improved, I'm getting higher up on the board. Uh, and additionally, I'm getting uh, some really, really awesome stand-up slides on this. I didn't know that I'd be able to stand-up slide uh, some like narrow trucks and a short wheelbase so well. See, I have it set up on the really small 20.4 wheelbase, just like we picked. Um, and that's been really fun. I'm glad to have a board with such a small wheelbase I can experiment with. The stand-up slides have been so good. Uh, that front taper with the bullet shape has worked out really well for me. I don't have any extra board where I don't need it. My front toe ends right there. You can see by the shape of the grip tape and the foot stop. That big wheel flare really catches my toe and keeps me locked in on heel sides. It gives me something to push on when I'm tuck leaning toe side. Um, the camouflage carbon fiber on this board is gorgeous. Might be a little hard to see with the glare today, but you see it's already covered in urethane dust from these wheels. I've been loving this board. It's treated me super well. It is rock solid, super stiff. The eight-ply maple is really heavy, so it might not be for everyone. I find this thing's a little bit hard to push around, but it is giving me the stability over bumps that I need and just the kind of dampened performance compared to my ultralight setup that I wanted to start feeling. Um, let me know if, come on bus, so loud. Problems with living in the city. Um, let me know if you're customizing a board using the Zenit board build, I want you to send it to me. Uh, send it to me on Instagram and let me know what trucks and wheels you're going to put on it. If you're going to use a wedge, if you're going to use a foot stop. Uh, my Instagram is owencampbell777. Check it out. You can often see when I'm posting new reviews, maybe get sneak peeks on products that I've been writing. And that's where you're going to hear updates about all this gear first. So. Send me what you make in the Zenit Custom Board Builder and I'll be excited to see it. Thank you all so much and I hope you have a wonderful day.